Grace and peace to all who do the will of our Father in heaven. So this came across my timeline today. And I decided to to get off my butt and make a video about it. <laughs> so Ukraine, Victoria, Apanesco, I'm sorry, I, I butchered that name. I know I did. Reveals national costume for the 71st Miss Universe, I guess, uh, competition or pageant. And so this is how this one will be going to the Miss Universe pageant. Now, what's interesting about her, well, one of the things is that um, she was actually the runner up for the 2021 Miss, uh, Miss Ukraine. So she wasn't even the winner of Miss Ukraine, but she is being or she is going to the Miss Universe pageant in 2022 for Ukraine. And part of me believes that she was selected because of her name and her name is Victoria now Victoria is the name of um, well that is the Roman name of the goddess who was also called Nike in Greek and as you can see clearly from the imagery she is evoking that warrior goddess imagery and that is um, seen actually all over the world but it goes all the way back to Ishtar, who was the warrior goddess in Babylon. Now, I will play a few things in this video, but before I get into more about that, I want to talk about what I believe from my own sort of discernment here, what's going on with the... Um, symbolism behind Ukraine if that's the way I should put it now the trident could represent a lot of different things I'm not I'm not insisting on one interpretation here the trident was a well it was famous for being a weapon in the hand of Poseidon who was the god of the sea the ruler of the sea and the thing about that is the sea or the waters are symbolic of people, of nations, of um, populations. So if the, the holder of the trident is the ruler of the sea, then the holder of the trident is the ruler of nations or people. And I think, you know, in my discernment here, what I'm, what I'm picking up on is that this is a battle for control of um, people in the future. Large nations or let's just even say leadership going forward in the world. A shift of powers or about the balance of powers are shifting. And so you have Russia and NATO or I will say BRICS and NATO because I think that's, that's what the um, I don't think Russia is going to be alone in this. So in BRICS, you have Brazil, Russia, India, China, and um, what was the last one? It was Iran. I'm sorry. Was Iran in there? I think Iran is in there too. I'm not sure why. Uh, I know India is there, but I'm not sure why Iran is not listed. I'm pretty sure Iran is in there as well. But Let's get some images of um, this. This, to me, feels like the the um, the alliance that will be against the Western alliance, and I'm already seeing World War World War Three shaping up. Now, the outcome of this battle for Ukraine or the battle for the Trident is probably going to influence who is in power of whatever the world looks like on the other side of this war. Now, I wanted to mention one thing about the trident is that it was also a symbol. You see um, some 
deities or some some gods or goddesses in um, India also hold the trident. But the reason I'm bringing up Britannia, because she was a symbol of Britain and the British Empire, is because, well, it goes back to this imagery of the warrior goddess again. And so Britannia had the trident. And again, the trident, in my discernment, is a symbol of the of the person or the or the power that rules over people and nations. And the British Empire had far reach. It reached over into um, Australia and India and, and the, the New World, which is America, Canada. And so I see some significance there that I think, or, or should I say some proof that, that there's something to that, that the trident actually means something like that. And of course, briefly while I'm on this picture, let's discuss the imagery of this warrior goddess because um, it goes all the way back to Babylon. There you have the lion, which was the, one of the companions of Ishtar and Inanna. And so you also have the helmet on her head, which was also worn by um, the goddess called Roma which was the personification of Rome and Athena as well. And this kind of links to what, what, is, what is called the national personifications, where each nation seems to have a personification or a, a god, basically, representing that country. Now, the vast majority of those countries or, or the countries or nations in the world have a female representative and you can easily say well that's because um, a country should be represented as a woman or a female not necessarily America has had a, uh, a few and some of these countries don't have a female representative some of them have um, let's say a person such as like this the Dominican Republic has a, a man named Con Trump Primo, and sometimes they're just a famous person. Um, Uncle Sam is another example of a personification of America, but um, um, America also had Columbia and Liberty, Libertas, and many other goddesses to represent them. Now, of course, I believe that this is the spirit of Babylon. This is um, Babylon the Great. An actual spirit and uh, so that's why the majority of these countries have a female personification who is really just Ishtar and no it is not Semiramis because there was no Semiramis as the wife of Nimrod that is just unfortunately that is a myth that Alexander Hislop started, he provided no sources for and no evidence for, and it can't be backed up or supported by anybody else. Every source that you will find on Semiramis being Nimrod's wife goes back to Alexander Hislop because he is the origin of that myth. Now, I wanted to, be, um, before I get back to the Ukraine warrior goddess, I wanted to speak briefly on um, Roma, I just who I just mentioned a second ago. Now, there was a coin around between the period of 69 AD and 79 AD, and of course Jerusalem was sacked and besieged and, and destroyed in 70 AD by General Titus. Now, on one side of the coin you have Titus, and on the other side of the coin you have Roma, the goddess Roma. And Romans has a number of goddesses actually representing it. But this one just happens to be what um, Rome gets its name from. And also, as you can see in this image on this coin, Roma, it, she is sitting on a number of hills or mountains. Um, now, I don't, I don't count seven in this picture. I count one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if I stretch, I can probably make seven out of there, but, 
um, those are not seven but even still I think the the, the intent is there um, now of course I believe that the Bible is very specific when it says mountains and not hills the more recent translations say hills but uh, mountains are prophetic they have prophetic meaning which means kingdoms so I am very um, strict on the interpretation that it is seven mountains and um, again I believe ultimately while there are locations on earth that can qualify as Babylon ultimately I see the spirit there and here's another coin now I'm not um, trying to say that every coin has the image of a goddess on the back even though many of them do even many coins um, from America has the goddess Columbia or some goddess on the back because as you can see with Antiochus Epiphanes who was one of the types of the Antichrist who defiled the temple and that was in um, I can't remember exactly what year it is but I believe it's written yeah, it is written in the book of Maccabees and that is in the Apocrypha that was in the 1611 um, Bible now in this image you see Antiochus Epiphanes and he has on the back of his coin an image of Nike or, or Athena actually I'm sorry Athena with Nike in her hand Nike again is also called Victoria but some of his coins on some of his coins he has Zeus back there so um, and this time Zeus is holding Nike in his hand which is victory so it's not always the case where you're going to have a goddess on the coin um, but some or a lot of times you do so just wanted to make that clear and now back to this um, thing with the, the Miss Universe pageant so you have um, Victoria Apanasenko um, going as the goddess Victoria. <laughs> Victoria as the goddess Victoria. As you look at this, you see, of course, she has the laurel wreath on her head. And the laurel wreath, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that well, laurel wreath is uh, identif identified with Nike victory it is a symbol of victory and you typically see it on the head of Apollo um, or who the Bible will call Apollyon and that is the son of perdition and but just specifically dealing with this image here so she also has the light rays going out of out of her head and I mean, there's no mistaking that this is a goddess and she has the double-edged sword. And remember what the Bible says about the strange woman. That her lips are like a double-edged sword. And uh, her lips are sharp as a double-edged sword, I mean. But the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. So, um, also you see on her wings, you see these arrows. And modern, modern arrows are missiles and bullets. But it's very clear. That this is a um, goddess of war. Now here she is beside an image with Nike. And one thing that um, you might notice is that Nike is, is winged, right? She always has wings. You don't see a lot of gods or goddesses depicted with wings. But Nike always has wings. And... This is just another link to Ishtar who had wings on her back. Now you see that they are calling her a warrior of light or the warrior of light. And again with her being a modern version of Ishtar that makes sense because Ishtar was a, um, well she was the goddess of light. rules fights the champion of light. Where hope seems lost, there rides the rebellion. She rides the rebellion. 
together they stand ready against the dark, evil warriors of the Horde and their leader, the terrible Horde. The Rebellion, armed with hope and ancient powers against the force of an intergalactic army. This is the story of one who will become leader of the Great Rebellion. She-Ra, Princess of Power, 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 Power. She was Venus, right? And Venus was the light bearer or the light bringer. And here she is as um as you can read this quote over here, the warrior of light or the light bringer, Venus, Lucifer. The warrior of light costume symbolizes our nation's fight against darkness. Where darkness rules, fights the champion of light. Like the art like art archangel Michael, who defends Ukraine with a sword, it protects us. Victoria has a weapon in her hands. Her body is covered in armor, and at the same time, she carries light through the darkness that came to our peaceful lands with the aggressor. So again, she is the light bringer, but if you look at this through the Luciferian lens, the darkness was brought by who they call the Demiurge or the God of the Old Testament, and they typically look at him as Satan. And Lucifer or the Divine Feminine as the light bringer, wisdom, who will bring us into a, an enlightened age. And these emotions of the errant Sophia condensed as the material world over which Ildabuath was then made Lord. So the entire material universe is seen as the condensed emotional debris of the horror of the 36th Archon upon witnessing her own creation, who is then made God over this universe. Light is coming to give back everything the darkness stole. The light is coming to give back everything the darkness stole. Now, as I look at an up close image of this woman, Victoria, um, I also want to bring up a, a conversation or a topic that I know other people are going to mention too. Um, I don't usually like to get into speculation about who is trans and who is not, because a lot of the times where you see these transvestigation videos out there, when um, I was able to find later evidence that they were wrong. And I was convicted of the Most High not to speak on that topic again. Because I had got into it for a while. And like I said, I was convicted. And um, the word says that we are going to give an account for every idle word that we speak. So every word that we speak, we are going to give an account for regardless of who we think we are speaking about and remember that even the arch archangel michael who could have railed against satan and made accusation against satan didn't even do that but said the lord rebuked thee right we have to be careful what we put out there about other people and what we say because we don't want to bear false witness but it is a fact that the religion of the goddess um, had male devotees and that was a huge part of the religion of the goddess um, who were called sodomites and they were cross dressers and they, they were castrated and they wore that which would pertain which pertained to a woman so they were called abominations according to the bible and that was a big part of the goddess religion now the goddess religion hasn't went away as you clearly see every day it's still here with us so we um we can assume that some of these people in these beauty pageants are not what they were 
uh, or not what they are presenting themselves as, I should say. But as for this person, I cannot be sure. And um, honestly, I don't want to speculate. But I, I'm just saying that it did, that it does happen, and it must happen because it, it, it is there's nothing new under the sun. Now on the left you see an image of Ishtar, and you see that she's winged because it, um, this was based off, an, off of an older image of Ishtar from um, Mesopotamia, and so you they, they they included a lot of symbol a lot of her symbols in there. You see the lion at the bottom. You see the owl at the bottom as well on the right and higher up. Um, you see the serpent wrapped around her and above her head you see the eight pointed star which is typically associated with her um, Venus and the five pointed star is as well but we're, that's not there and we're not going to get into that right now. Um, we're just dealing with um, what we have on the screen now on the right side you see a, a diva right a diva means goddess who is literally presenting herself as the goddess because you see the light rays shining out but the light rays are being formed by weapons so again you have this goddess of war and what they often do is they hold their weapons a weapon a sword is a phallic object it's, it represents male power this is what the um, what a woman would do she would hold a phallic object to, to um, channel that masculine energy And so, a couple of, you know, the most important thing, I think, uh, for people to just grasp in the early stages, is that there's no longer, um, if, you're going to, if you're going to mention male violence, that males are capable of violence, we have to now look at the female criminal history. You know, there's a reason why the ancient myths had these Circes, these Salomes, these Pandoras. Hey, don't open the box. Oh, no, she opened it. And all the horrors of the world came forth. Now, why is that? As I said, why is there a female figure right there at the beheading of the John the Baptist, which is all this occult symbolism? Why does Jesus Christ look effeminate? What the hell? Why don't they paint him with a beard looking like a regular guy? Some of them do, but in the early days they didn't. They painted him very female-like. Same with John the Baptist. There's a lot of weird symbolism going on here. The Eleusinian myths. You've got the Statue of Liberty. Uh, as I said, uh, the Bacchanalias. The Eleusinian myth of the female rights of tearing the male to pieces. We've got the Statue of Liberty up there. We've got all this symbolism that we see in the um, architecture. i got questions about all of this. And, and again, going back into this cult of Venus that I talked about in the Age of Manipulation. Oh, it's right behind these rock icons. It's right in there in the drug, the, the mushroom cult, the whole psychedelics. Right. It's, loaded, it's loaded with this female sexual, uh, pansexual symbolism. Look at TriStar. Look at Columbia Pictures. Look at the logos mm -hmm. that they're using. Matthew 24, verse 29 through 31 reads, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heaven, 
and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This is our gathering together. This is the the rapture. And this is what he promised when he said he would gather his people back into their land again. By the way. <laughs> so again, the sun and moon are darkened. The heavens are shaken. The sound and there is a sound of a great trumpet. All these things happen at the day of God's wrath. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 through 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18 reads, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words.